Hi everyone, this is Clint from Persuasive Evangelism, and today I'm going to go over Timothy Keller's The Reason for God, uh, Belief in the Age of Skepticism. I just finished this book. Uh, this is the first book I've read by Timothy Keller. Uh, prayers for him right now. He just announced that he has pancreatic cancer. Uh, I believe he announced it this week, so prayers for him. Uh, this is a really good book. We, we've been going over it the last couple months in about uh, early morning Bible study I go to. So uh, totally recommend this book. It's broken up into two sections. Uh, the first part is uh, the leap of doubt. So each chapter goes over a tough question and gives a Christian response about it. So uh, here's some of the topics. Uh, chapter one is there can't be just one true religion. So why? Uh, uh, some people say why is Christianity the true religion? Uh, chapter two: How could a good God allow suffering? Chapter three: Christianity is a straitjacket. Chapter four: The church is responsible for so much injustice. Chapter five: How can a loving God send people to hell? Chapter six: Science has disproved Christianity. Chapter seven, you can't take the Bible literally. Uh, so each chapter focuses on one of these topics. Um, it's a it's a overview of the topic. So if you're interested in one of these topics, have questions about it, I would look search out books for it. Um, there's whole books written on each of these topics. For instance, Science Has Disproved God that talks about the re Christian response about God and science. You can look up books by John Lennox and he focuses on that and other people. Um, the second section is the reasons for faith. So it gives the reasons for faith. And these chapters are the clues of God, the knowledge of God, the problem of sin, religion and the gospel, the true story of the cross. I really like that chapter. The re reality of the resurrection. That's a really good chapter. And then the dance of God and then epilogue. Where do we go from here? So this has so much um, good information in it. Um, the reason why we did a Bible study on it. So. Um, I just wanted to read uh, the a little bit in the reality of the resurrection. So uh, all of Christianity is based on the resurrection of Christ. If he didn't rise from the dead, then there would be no Christianity. So the reality is Christ rose from the dead, giving us hope that this short life isn't the end. Like if you accept Christ in your heart, he promises you eternal life and you will be risen as well. Uh, so I wanted to read this one uh, chapter, or not chapter, but paragraph. Uh, sometimes people approach me and say, I really struggle with this aspect of Christianity teaching, uh, or of Christian teaching. I like this part of Christian belief, but I don't think I can accept that part. I usually respond, if Jesus rose from the dead, then you have to accept all he said. If he didn't rise from the dead, then why worry about any of what he said? The issue on which everything hangs is not whether or not you like his teaching, but whether or not he rose from the dead. That is how the first hearers felt who heard reports of the resurrection. They knew that if it was true, it meant we can't live our lives any way we want. It also meant we don't have to be afraid of anything, not Roman swords, not cancer, nothing. If Jesus rose from the dead, it changes everything. So um, that's the Christian faith in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to go over to this chapter. Uh, let's see. Um, he brings up the verse um, that Christian faith, you know, promises eternal life. Heaven um, will come down and on earth and a new earth and a new heaven um, without pain and suffering um, and God with us. Um, but he points out this chapter, Rev or Revelation 21, 4. He will, he will write wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things is passed away. So that's exciting. All that, all the suffering of this life will be no more. And then I like uh, this last uh, paragraph about our eternal life. And that, and when we get there, we will say, I have come home at last. This is my real country. I belong here. This is the land I've been looking for all my life, though I never knew it. And it will by no means be the end of our story. In fact, as C.S. Lewis put it, all the adventures we have ever had will end up being only the cover and the title page. Finally, we will begin chapter one of the great story, which 
no one on earth has read, which goes on forever, in which every chapter is better than the one before. So some people get the idea that heaven will be born. We're just on clouds singing Kumbaya, but no, we're going to be more alive then than we ever will be here. And uh, it will be the beginning of an amazing adventure. So yeah, this is a great book. And basically, if you want to become a Christian, it says here, you need, uh, you need to repent. Repentance then is confessing the things besides God himself that you have been relying on for your hope, significance, and security. That means we should repent not only of things we have done wrong, like cheating or lying, but also for the motivations beneath our good works. And then the second thing you have to do is believe in Christ. Belief in Christ has a definite content to it. We must believe he, he was who he said he was, and that require that we require salvation, that on the cross he secured that salvation, that he rose from the dead. How, However, while life-changing Christian faith is not less belie than believing these things with your intellect, it's much, much more. The faith that changes the life and connects to God is best conveyed by the word trust. Imagine you are on a high cliff and you lose your footing and begin to fall just beside you, it, beside you as you fall as a branch sticking out at the very edge of the cliff. It is your only hope and it is more than strong enough to support your weight. How can it save you? If your mind is filled with intellectual certainty that the branch can support you, but you don't actually reach out and grab it, you are lost. If your mind is instead filled with doubts and uncertainty that the branch can hold you, but you reach out and grab it anyway, you will be saved. Um, so the branch is Christ. Reach out, um, accept him as your Lord and Savior. Repent and believe in him and as, um says you'll, your sins will be forgiven and Christ will live with you and you'll have eternal life. So uh, great book. I totally recommend this. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. God bless.